Okay, I'm going to talk about A, B, C, D, E, which stands for a better CD encoder. Now, A, B, C, D, E is a command line front end that, that kind of takes a bunch of programs that are on most Linux systems and just kind of merges with the other. So you have CD Paranoia that will pull the, the red book standard CD data off the disk, like, a, like my Princess Superstar disk here. It'll pull the data off ones and zeros and re repackage them into a PCM file. Um, another tool, I forgot the name of it, but it basically pulls um, the data from those, the database to tell you the track listing, because you know, the track may not be written on here according to the Redbook standard, but you can go on the internet and pull that shit down. Then, of course, the next part is the encoder, which you can choose the FLAC encoder. You can lose use lame MP3 encoder, og vorbis, og uh, opus. Um, did I say FLAC? FLAC. You can use FLAC. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So the disk is in the disk drive, and if you check real quick inside, you can see audio disk. Now, fun thing is that GNOME, and probably other desktops too, you can actually just play these files right off here. It shows up as virtualized uh, WAV files, even though it's actually playing digitally streaming out through there. I don't know how good that is compared to CD Paranoia, so we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. So, A, B, C, D, E, a better CD encoder. So let's take a quick peek at the help. There is, there is a lot going on here. There is an, a lot. So, we're not going to cover any of that, because fuck that. All right. <laughs> so, A, B, C, D, E. And then you do the out command, and then you choose the formats. So, for this particular one, I'm just going to do Opus. Opus is, if you don't know, a patent-free audio codec. It's very small. Uh, it's a lossy format, but it sounds really good for how small the files are. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit this. Okay, so because I ripped this one before, it has on um, the database locally cached. Um, however, if it's not locally cached, it'll have a list of different albums with the most likely, the least likely. This one, it did a really good job figuring out what it is. So we're going to go ahead. You know what? I'm going to say no. So it's going to look it up. There you go. Querying this database. So it's like that's the only one on here, bro. One, one match. <laughs> that's it's not a very popular brand, uh, band here. So edit the locally data uh, CDDB data. So sometimes there's like a little error, or sometimes they have like, you know, maybe you don't want that capitalized or whatever. You can go in and you can uh, you can make those edits. But you know, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, so you can see what that looks like. Now I just kind of opened up this text file in Vim, and here's all your all your stuff, your your text. Uh, happy ending, yeah. So, but I'm I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and quit that. Is this a multi-artist CD? That way you can have a different artist for tracks. This is not. We're not gonna cover that today. Now it's creating the playlist, and that's it. It begins the ripping process. It rips the audio into a temporary file as a uncompressed WAV file. As you can see, it's cranking along pretty good. Little happy guy right there. And then as soon as it's done, it'll start the encoding process. Right now I'm only doing Opus, but if you have Opus, MP3, and all those different ones, it'll do each one, one after another. FLAC, Opus, and all that. So you end up with the folders of the different formats. So that one's done. And of course it's encoding the audio file. Now if we go back to our music folder... Where's music? There's music. There we go. We're going to go into the Opus. We already have one song already encoded. Let's see if it has the information in the tag here. Yeah. So, 2 minutes 20 seconds, 2.4 megabytes. It's about 120 kilobytes per second. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the basics. You can kind of dig deeper and pipe in different commands and different encoding types if you like. All right, so you're probably wondering, like, why would anybody want to use um, CDs when you have, like, Flack and Spotify? Well, 
the truth is, you might have CDs. I have this album I bought a while back. It was actually uh, signed by the artist, which is pretty cool. It's a band that, one of the smaller bands I like, and the booklet was pretty rad. Um, so I've had this for years. I think I bought this in 2006, 2004, somewhere around there. But it's a good album. I still enjoy it. And smaller bands like this aren't usually on all the streaming services. So the tools you're going to need, if you don't have a built-in uh, drive, is you can pick up these cheap, slim DVD drives for like $30, $40. And they're just USB. Um, they're pretty fast, very reliable, and uh, I highly recommend them. And uh, this, this one in particular, uh, I want to point out, it also does DVD writing, which is a big deal for me because I have some film content that I want to get on the screen. I actually used to work in a movie theater and we used to put our own homemade movies on the big screen using this. CDs are still pretty awesome. Um, if you have them laying around and you want to pull some offline, it's, it's a good offline alternative to like Spotify and all that. And of course, they still sound amazing. So anyways, Take care, guys, and I'll see you next time.